You are listening to a pleasure podcast. For more from our sex podcast collective, visit pleasurepodcasts.com. Welcome to American Sex, the award winning podcast dedicated to challenging those puritanical, backward ass ideals that we have in the U.S. I'm Sunny Megatron, and my co host is Ken Melvoin Berg. We're sexuality educators, pleasure advocates, and ridiculous sadistic kinksters. We're also non monogamously married to each other. So strap in or strap one on. In this house, your pleasure is power. Your kink is customizable. And your subversive perversions are revolutionary. Hey, friends, welcome to episode 200 of American Sex. I've got a great conversation for you this week. So not only are we talking about finding safe and inclusive kink communities for gender nonconforming and trans folks, but also how to be that community for those of us who are allies and accomplices. And our guest is Veronica Kestrel, who was with us once before for our dollification episode, aka doll roleplay. So in this conversation, we talk about the reasons why, despite the kink subculture's commitment to inclusivity, why everything from honorifics, like the titles we call each other, sir and mistress, to our dom sub frameworks are so heteronormative, and how some communities are still very closed off. Uh, Veronica gives advice for gender nonconforming, non-binary, and trans folks navigating community, including tips on vetting communities, play spaces, and people. We touch on the intersectional nature of marginalized identities, and how when we boil all of these issues down to their lowest common denominator, we're all pretty much fighting the same fight, both inside and outside of kink and BDSM spaces. We also talk about sissy play and cuckolding and so much more. Now, if you're not familiar with Veronica, you need to be. I will have her bio in the show notes, but here's the quick rundown. Veronica Kestrel is a 15-year veteran of the kink lifestyle. She's also a professional dominatrix and kink lifestyle educator affiliated with the Los Angeles Sanctuary. Veronica has been an active member of various communities as an educator at all sorts of venues and conferences, uh, also as a munch host in Anaheim, California, and an organizer of trans-focused events and a lot more. She's been on a bunch of kink podcasts too, and makes some great educational kink content on TikTok as well. Veronica prides herself in her efforts to make kink a friendlier, more ethical, and inclusive community any way she can. And before we get to that conversation, let's really super quickly wash the balls. What's that? That is housekeeping here on American Sex. And that's our clean ball noise. It'll be quick. We don't have a whole lot, just like, two things. Fast, fast, fast. First of all, if you missed the Dom Sub Virtual Summit, it was just last week and it was freaking amazing. I'm not kidding. And if you're having some FOMO right now, have no fear because the VIP ticket that includes like lifetime access to the whole conference and which I think was like 17 classes plus all of the bonus materials, which blew my pants off. Like workbooks, all of these uh, streamable workshops from the presenters, literally $2,700 worth of extra educational bonuses. You can get all that still is for the $99 VIP ticket. So yay, 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 yay. I streamed the whole conference. The classes were great. I've also gone through most of the bonus stuff and amazing, 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 amazing. If you're looking for a full library of kink information that is DS focused. Now that's everything from uh, full time dom sub dynamics to dom sub play in the bedroom and everywhere in between. That is a fantastic price for that much great educational material. So the link will be in the show notes. Or if you've got a good memory, head to bit.ly that's bit.ly slash sunny 
D S Summit. Now, secondly, you know, I'm talking about the episode description. So I got to tell you all the goodies that are in there, all sorts of links from the resources referenced in today's episode to discounts to our episode sponsors to our Patreon page to the link to our free discord community. Also my free kink and BDSM negotiation mini workbook and One last thing I think you're going to like, especially if you dig this episode, you're going to find the link to Zipper Magazine, which if if you haven't checked it out, please do. I'm the editor in chief of this online digital magazine all about kink. But in our conversation, I talk about the 94 non-binary honorifics list that I published in Zipper Magazine. So I will also include the link to that in the show notes. You guys are digging it. So go go use that as a resource. There's some good ideas on there. And guess what? That is it. We are done. And these balls are clean. Get ready for our conversation with Veronica Kestrel about gender in the kink community. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. We have back Veronica Kestrel. Hi, Veronica. Hi. I love talking to you. I love your brain. I I just, there, there's so much. I could talk for the whole hour going, I love this. I love that. Um, <laughs> but you and I were talking offline and there is a need for the conversation we're about to have. Which, I agree. Yeah. So gender nonconforming st- people in kink and just in general gender stuff and i want to call it gender fuckery but gender fuckery is the fun this is the not the fun kind of gender mm-hmm. fuckery there's a lot 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 going on in the kink community that's not great along these lines so that where should true. we start where should we start um so let's just talk about the the general state of affairs as okay. it goes as it as it pertains to gender non-conforming people and our inclusion in the lifestyle mm-hmm. so it's it's well established at this point that the the lifestyle in general has been in, incredibly queer focused like that's where it originated that's right. where the, all the origins are and yet Um, There are a ton of stereotypes about the community that kind of filter it down to oddly heterosexual arrangements where, you know, women are are seen as primarily submissive and men are seen as the dominance, even though everyone has played every role. Right. And uh and, and so it's it's gotten to the point where we've got whole new sexist stereotypes inside of a community that's been all about exchanging that power naturally and and doing so consensually and within our own boundaries and control. And that's kind of been ripped away from us uh as part of the lifestyle. We 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 have left behind one set of standards uh and social expectations and ended up getting a whole new set they're different but they still have a lot of their own problems yeah yeah and so now i'm going to ask the big question and i Mm -hmm. definitely have my opinions on this one but like Mm -hmm. you've got the stage why do you think we have gone from a community you know we started as a queer community Mm -hmm. and now we are so so like cis heteronormative how do you, how did that happen? Do you think? Uh, I don't want to be over reductionist about it, but I've said it before. Uh, I think it has a lot to do with horny dudes and horny dude money. Um, I think it has a lot to do with the, the money and what people will pay for and what people will pay to see and participate in in the lifestyle. Uh-huh. Um, in and just like anything else under a capitalist society. Money is going to determine a lot of the direction of any particular project, uh, especially when it has to pay the bills and keep the lights on, which is a reasonable thing, right? We have to, we have to want to keep the lights on. We want the dungeons to succeed, which means Mm -hmm. that we need guests in the doors, which means we need to appeal to people who will pay. 
for yeah. that privilege to get into our doors, to play with this, uh, the staff in professional environments, to attend the parties. And so for that, you need to give a presentation that will entice the money out of people's wallets. And the bulk of that money is currently coming from horny dudes. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, every damn thing, whether it's kink, whether it's any any problem that I have been talking about, it's like, oh, yeah, when you peel back all the layers, it's like systems, capitalism, patriarchy, all mm-hmm. the isms. It's, it's, yeah. So what are we seeing? What's kind of the, the state of what's going on in our communities, our, you know, in terms of inclusion, et cetera? Well, uh, we're seeing a a wide diversity of levels of inclusion and participation throughout the community. Uh Uh, Obviously, out here in L.A., uh, the dungeon that I work for is the Los Angeles Sanctuary, uh, and that's ran and owned by a trans woman that is run by Mr. Cyan St. James, legend in the community. Uh Mr. Cyan, if you're watching this, love you so much. Yes, yes. But... uh, it, and that is a venue that is run by a trans woman in mm-hmm. the, the local scene. So obviously, it, it takes a lot of strides to making sure that trans and gender nonconforming people feel included and feel valued as part of the community. Right. Um, we make it as part of the policy that we do not tolerate transphobia in the dungeon. None of the events that are allowed to, that are run by the sanctuary in its space that aren't like hosted by like a private venue renting out the dungeon to hold their their parties. Uh, all of those parties are necessarily trans inclusive. Um, we even have an event that is ge- geared towards gender, uh, gender nonconforming people and trans people. Um, and I don't want to say that this is the exception to the rule because, you know, generally the kink community is more accepting of trans identities than the society at large. So we mm-hmm. do see that general trend uh, throughout the lifestyle, um, but in any particular uh, in any particular area, mm-hmm. um, you're going to see um, their values and general attitudes reflected in their own scenes, uh, and the uh, the overall overwhelming a- uh, ideas that are are held by local demographics are still going to influence the kink culture, even if it's in small ways, right. Right. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I, I, I was when I was a a, a baby kinkster. Uh, I started off my my kink journey in Denver, and this was way back in two thousand nine, uh, and so two thousand eight actually, uh, and so it was a long time ago. And we, when I went there, it was a very inclusive space because it was run by it was uh, the the Denver Sanctuary is run by. Uh, Christine Wengelick, mm-hmm. awesome lady, uh, and she ran a very inclusive space. And so it was, they, we have parties specifically around the idea of non-conforming uh, gender identities, and it was super great. And when you went there, you still, and, and you, you got to have a more inclusive and accepting environment. However, at the same time, it was in that same community um, which people oftentimes compare to California and its level of progressiveness, but still in that same community, when I went there, I was labeled a sissy because I was gender non-conforming uh. at the time. This is obviously pre-transition. I've only been transitioning. I'm in my fourth year of my transition now, okay. right? So this is way before that. And uh, I was labeled a sissy and that interfered with my ability to understand my the wholeness of me and, and and how I wanted to express myself. Uh-huh. So um so we're gonna talk about sissy stuff a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. But but there are preconceptions that are pervasive throughout the community that are going to influence people's opinions about gender nonconforming people in the in the spaces. You know, I know that just my knowledge of the different areas of the country, it blows my mind how not inclusive some spaces are and you know of course we're going to go to the stereotypes like yeah probably in the deep south or probably blah, 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 blah. but mm-hmm. not necessarily you know there were when i was in chicago some places that were very very inclusive and other places where it was like you've got to be kidding me and i know we had talked about earlier like the uh getting into the clubs like the different gendered pricing and all mm-hmm. of that and it's you know people be like hey uh 
what do you do? Well, blah, 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 blah. Uh, here in Vegas, same sort of thing. That stuff is still happening. And people are like, what the hell are you doing? And I don't want to lay that at the feet of just uh, more conservative leaning states either. And, right. and I think that's really important to, to understand and to make very clear in this discussion is that California, even Southern California out here, is by no means innocent of this. We have, mm-hmm. um, when when people think about the lifestyle, and when, when I think about personal Personally, when I think about a lifestyle venue, I'm thinking mm-hmm. about places like Threshold. I'm thinking about places like the Sanctuary. I'm thinking about places that I would go to for community-centered events. Mm-hmm. Um, but when you think about what the lifestyle actually consists of, there are numerous other venues that are not strictly BDSM dungeons. There's right. people who consider to be like swingers clubs to be part of the lifestyle, mm-hmm. um, which I, I would personally debate, but general society would not yeah. um and there's uh, there's other uh more private venues and those actually do get quite exclusive uh and not in the good way in, in the sense that they are exclusionary mm-hmm. um and 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 certainly can uh, find ways to either through pricing or through policy trim the list of people that don't fit their uh their rubric of desirability right and and their need to supposedly avoid political consequences <sighs> god <laughs> i have so many things just ah, my there's brain. a lot my yes, brain this is, gonna... is so mad my brain is mad um it's an empty episode so, <laughs> god this is like yeah, we'll just call it my brain is mad my brain is mad that's the name of this episode that's really the name of almost every episode my brain is mad or my brain is horny it's one or the other <laughs> I'm pretty sure the last one was one of the latter, you know, doll play. Yeah. That wasn't that wasn't an angry episode. That's at all. true. That's true. That was my brain is horny. Totally, totally. <laughs> um, so okay. I'm thinking of you know being in the mind of a listener, right? Who mm-hmm. is somebody who is gender nonconforming, who let's say they are getting interested in kink, maybe wanting to branch out, going to some community events, that sort of thing. And the, you know, how many of our first few minutes of this conversation, they're like, Oh shit. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So what would you um, tell folks in that position that want to navigate the community? What are, I don't know, some of the pluses, some of the things to watch out for some of the, the tips, what would you tell them? So what I would end up telling these people is, that, oddly enough, the same thing I tell everybody, and that's that's gender nonconforming and, and cisgender people all in the same pot on this one, is that you don't start by going to parties. You don't start by going to events where you're going to be put into uh, stressful or intense situations. You start by going to munches because your 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 path into the community in a healthy way is always going to come from linking up with them socially, figuring out getting getting a feel for the local community and mm-hmm. what the attitudes are because you go to one munch uh and it's going to be people from a certain demographic in that area that can make it there or uh and then you go to another and you and you find a completely different crowd of people cuz even within a a, lo- a single local community people will split off into numerous niches mm-hmm. right and so what you want to do is you want to try to go to different munches wherever the social gatherings are that don't include play that don't include the pressure of needing to play go to those gatherings and get the vibe mm-hmm. figure out which groups seem to have their shit together uh, vis-a-vis trans issues, vis-a-vis your own personal identity, however it is when it comes to your your gender identity ex- and expression, your sexuality, whatever, because you will get a, a, a better read on how they think about you and the idea of having you included in their space by interacting with them direct, with the lights on, with your clothes on at a restaurant, talking with these people about what it is they think about the community and, and how it is that they run their space. People are, yeah. are it, it's be- it's just a better environment, far more conducive to having conversations. Mm-hmm. Um, so once you get a general idea of who in the community is actually an ally and wants to have you there and feel safe, you vet those people, Right. And you can vet people even if you're not planning on playing with them. You know, just say, hey, look, I'd like to know more about the community and more about you. Uh, Could I get, like, references, people that you've played with? You know, there's 
ethical kinksters will never object to being vetted. Mm-hmm. And I'll say that again for the cheap seats. Ethical kinksters will never object to being vetted. Yes, it does feel like you're under a microscope. Yes, you have no control of what any of the people who are vetting you are going to say about you. But they will never object to that process because we know how critical it is towards the protection of the people vetting us and towards our own protection so that we know what it is that we're dealing with, their willingness to look up this information and make sure that we're safe. So you vet those people and obviously it's still going to take a bit of trust at that point because you can't guarantee that someone is safe, right? right? There are just some master manipulators out there. And so trust your gut. But when you can figure out that someone seems safe and they seem to be consistent between people, right? Get that read on the situation, then start figuring out what venues those people go to. Ask them for advice. What's a good venue for me to go to? Could, could you point me in the direction of someone in your community that would either be like me or knows where I can find parties that would be the best and most inclusive, healthy environments for people like me. Right. Right. Um, And then when you do make sure that you're writing this stuff down, that you're keeping notes because inevitably when you become a staple in your community, then the newbies are going to come to you. You know, the 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 baby trans eggs that are just hatching and want, need a safe place to come out and to be part of their community while they're undergoing their own journey of self-exploration and discovery, they're going to want to come to the people who are more veterans. And, and you're going to want to uh, have that information for them as well for mutual uh, support and just to make sure that your community remains safe because this is it's, it's give and take. Everyone has to participate the whole way. Yeah. 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 And I and I also just want to point out I'm I'm like such a mom. I'm like, "Oh, for like the baby kinkster listening who is like, this is a lot. Oh my god. <laughs> it it's is a lot. Scary. Um and I I want to point out like even though, you know, and I do this myself, I talk a lot about safety and, you know, looking out for red flags and this and that. And I don't want anyone to get the impression like we're implying that the kink community is so dangerous and every other mm-hmm. community isn't. It's It's like there are fuckheads and, you know, abusive people and manipulators everywhere. And in my opinion, we haven't really been taught very well to watch our own backs in just default world vanilla situations. But like being in a kink situation with somebody, that's a much more vulnerable, oftentimes for a lot of people, quick vulnerable situation i think there's there's an inherent reason for that is is we have we were part of this community and we go into these community spaces in order to sort of trade off sets of social standards right Mm -hmm. instead of being in the in the vanilla community where there's a lot more that has to happen before you get into a intimate situation that can be particularly intense in Mm -hmm. the king community you're shown the path we know starting off at least at the very least we know that the people in this space are openly okay with discussing being kinky. And if they're not, and they're here to watch, they'll tell you that too. But right. everyone in this space, you can either assume that they're kinky or assume that they are comfortable being around kinky stuff. Mm-hmm. And while that's great and allows you to uh, get past that original uh, discomfort of, should I tell them? You know, they're going to think I'm insane. You know, <laughs> uh, no, we, we reserve that for people like me with edge play kinks. <laughs> um, the, uh, While you do get to skip that part of worrying about whether or not they're going to accept you as a kinky person, you are trading that set of social standards for a far more strict set of consent standards. Mm -hmm. You do need to be more explicit with what it is that you say. You do need to be more open about uh, about communicating, about discussing exactly what it is that you want to do because of that, that additional scrutiny and that additional vulnerability conferring upon you additional responsibility Mm -hmm. however and this has unfortunately been the case with some people that i've even introduced to the lifestyle is that these people get into the situations like at a dungeon or just in the lifestyle in general and they think oh this is the community where everything's just easier to get into this position therefore this must be an easy place to get laid or this must be an easy place to do whatever and because there are a lot of people in the lifestyle with that attitude 
we like to think that we filter them out quickly, but they're still here. Right, right. Because there are a lot of people in the lifestyle that actually do have that attitude, people who are coming into the lifestyle, running into them, will feel that social pressure and will feel pressured into playing too early, into engaging into sexual play way too early. Uh And so no matter what, if we're going to make anything clear to the kinky newbies, it's that No, there is no expectation that you are going to participate in sexual play early or at all. Mm -hmm. Period. Okay. That, and please don't take a collar in your first year of playing. Like, don't do it. You don't know what it means. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 for those who missed the last episode, go back to episode 199 on grooming in the kink lifestyle because mm. that yeah, there's a, it's a whole thing. It's a whole mm-hmm. episode. Um so folks who are entering into the community or maybe they've been in the community for a while who mm-hmm. are trans, gender nonconforming, etc., there is this like political i can never say the word say it for me politicization thank you i'm like politicization (laughs) um that you know it's like can you just go and be you or now Mm -hmm. are you some symbol and representation and you know speaker of all the gender people like what's that about okay so if there is (laughs) This is a terrible comparison. If there's one thing that the kink and the gaming community seem to have in common, it's that the inclusion of any non-standard gender identity is inherently political to these people. Mm -hmm. Uh, It happens a lot, unfortunately. One time uh, when I was uh, talking with a potential dominant that I was uh, in mutual consideration, Mm -hmm. um, this years and years and years ago, I said, hey, uh, I'm a I'm a trans woman. I'm very early in my transition. Um, what do you think about that? It was as soon as I brought that up, he says, "Well, you know, I've I've dated women like you before, and it's always ends up being a fight around gender." And I'm like, "Okay, this is the red flag." I I couldn't go on beyond that point because people assume that you're going to start fights. They're going to assume that you're bringing in drama and politics when they what they don't realize the politics are already there. Right. We're just trying to make sure that you're aware of our feelings and want you to include us. That doesn't mean that we're going to start fights all the time. Right. But by merely existing our we are inherently politicized by a lot of people who say, well, if I try to open this up to a trans issue, or if I try to open up this venue to be trans inclusive or change this policy to be more sensitive to the needs of my trans attendees or clients, it's inherently political to some people. And they're worried about the heat that that would bring on them. Not, And and they don't consider even for a moment what that must feel like to the trans people who have to live that existence every day, being constantly politicized and needing to fight for about everything all the time for merely existing. Right. God, it's a lot. It's a lot, it is. you know, and I don't know. I, I just think to myself, if the way I operate is like, well, if I don't get political, that's a problem. <laughs> like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And this stuff, it, it is political. Like mm-hmm. you said, the existence is political, but then there's that like forced. Yeah. it's Well, it breaks, it breaks the immersion. It breaks the yeah. illusion that everything that we're doing is all sexy and it's all meant for the allure and the, and the tantalizing nature of all of it. And if you bring, if, if you bring a politics into that space, as if it's not already there, if you bring politics into that space, now it's not fun and horny anymore. So wait, are you, <laughs> it, is another way to put this, like, you're pissing in their fetishization cornflakes? Yeah, like, basically. Did they just want to fetishize and have fun and not think about anything else attached to it? Yeah, I mean, for example, this this is very relevant example. We have this kind of understanding in the in the 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 trans community community uh, that uh, that people who judge us will jerk off to us with their right hand and point at us with their left, like they yeah. won't give us rights. They'll fetishize us, but as soon as we have to be treated like actual people, now it's political. All of a sudden, they're 
perfectly fine as long as we're commoditized and packaged into little boxes and videos for their consumption, but certainly not having to consider us for as people. That's where they draw the line. That's where it becomes political. That's where it becomes a problem is that there's a person on the other end of that, that, you know, the people in all these videos that you're watching of us are people. But as soon as that's made clear to you and that you have to reckon with that, now it's a problem. Yeah. It's, it's, it's ruining. It's a, it's a boner killer. That's really what the problem is right there. It's the horny dudes with money again. We've come full circle back I, to the, like it's all re- <laughs> it's it's almost as if politics are intersectional. It's like right? These, oh. It's like the struggle against capitalism is the struggle for trans liberation is the struggle against racism is it's all it's all the same fight. Mm-hmm. And this is why you can't cut a marginalized community out of your fight. Because as soon as you do, you are becoming a hypocrite. You are you are throwing away allies that need to be kept close in this struggle. It's it's the it's something that uh, on my channel I'm constantly trying to push for the awareness about about most of the creators that I follow and am followed by that I'm in community with. We understand that this, these fights are all intersectional. It's important to make sure that we don't leave people behind. Yeah. Because, you know, if, 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 for example, if I don't want to go to a, a, an event with gendered pricing structures, which I know we're going to get to, uh, but if I say, hey, I don't want to tolerate this, I'm not going to go, even though I know that I'd be led into that event and charged or not charged as a woman, I still don't want to go, even though the policy wouldn't necessarily be applied to me, uh-huh. because there's a bunch of people that would not be treated as fairly in that in that structure in that system and if i don't show up and everyone else who could show up doesn't then the system is forced to change and if we're not doing it then we're actively contributing to the ongoing harm of any particular system yeah and this is the part where i have to bring up the controversy (gasps) uh and i'm going to bring this up as my final word on this goddamn subject uh because i've received death threats what uh, about this? Uh, yeah, um, I mean, people have seen them see people come into live and tell me that I should die. Um, so, as everyone on the planet knows, uh, the Harry Potter game out came out game oh, recently, yeah. right? And if I talk about it, if I don't talk about it, it doesn't matter. People will bring the drama to me. I don't have to go out looking for it; they'll come to me. I made one video addressing it just being like look this is clearly a litmus test about whether or not you're consistent in your principles are you capable of remaining an ally even when it's inconvenient for you and it actually isn't inconvenient it's extremely convenient to not buy a thing right 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 we've asked you for one thing ever and that's respect us as people use our pronouns respect us as people give us rights that's what we want to be treated the same as you Mm -hmm. in terms of actual praxis in terms of things that it would actually take away sort of from your ability to do anything we have asked one thing don't yeah. buy this one game because it is it was designed by an alt right asshole and when they removed him for the project they didn't change the story which as your jewish viewers will recognize is the fucking blood libel uh it is designed by that guy and it was based on a property written by a person who is actively contributing to transphobia in the legal system with her money with her statements who are she is currently being quoted on the floor of in in united states legislatures to pass anti-trans bathroom bills okay she's having an active impact and she won't stop so you need to stop supporting her i'm not saying you're a transphobe if you buy the game but i am saying that you're not an ally to trans people and as Uh i mentioned before the struggles are intersectional i don't care if your particular blend of intersectionalities of politics means that you're only hurting yourself because you're not. You're hurting yourself and the rest of the community. I've seen right. trans people get on and say it's totally fine. I've seen Jewish people get on and say it's totally fine. I've seen people who say, I saw a creator that I used to follow say, I'm gay and my partner's trans. So I don't want to hear anything about me <laughs> being a transphobe for supporting this video game. I'm like, 
Oh God! Y- you're you're fucking a trans person, so you think that makes this okay? <sighs> that's that's what this is. This is what I'm saying. It is. People will bring the drama to us, and when all of this this these intersections come together, and we ask for one thing, we need our allies to hold the line. Mm-hmm. Any gaps in the line allows their rhetoric to slip through. If we don't all hold the line, then whatever opening you made, people will use you as an example of why it's okay. If you as a trans person say, well, I'm still going to buy the game, then people are going to point to you and be like, see, this trans person says it's okay. Right. Yeah. So you're not being a good ally to your own community. You're you're Blair Whiting the entire community. Oh, yeah. God. It's, it's not It's not going to help. No. And I will say that definitively. And I hope now I don't have to make any more videos on this. <laughs> yes. Hold, I, hold the fucking line. Oh, God. I know. It's just like, ah, my, my mm. brain is screaming. My brain is screaming. <laughs> um, now, we had had you had brought up earlier getting to sissies, right? And I, yes. I, I've heard all sorts of things for, you know, different people about when it comes from like, Folks in the community who are cross-dressers or who are (laughs) sissies or who are trans and they all kind of get conflated together. And and then they get like, you know, their finger wagged at, like I've heard, you're making a mockery of womanhood. You know, Mm -hmm. like I just hear all sorts of, uh, so break that down for me. Okay. So this is probably going to be the longest part of this whole talk because there's a (laughs) lot to unpack here. I've written entire essays on the subject of the sissy kink and i've talked about it in videos and gotten responses to that and i just had kestrel industries had our first doll play munch uh, last week and it was awesome and it came up there and we discussed that as part of the overall dollification and doll play um topic of discussion so this the subject of sissy play comes up and real quick can i, I can i just cut you mm, off and just yeah. for those listening along who aren't familiar with the kink community just like really quickly to find what is sissy play like what are we talking about perfect that's what exactly what i was going to say oh, cool. uh, so sorry <laughs> so sissy play uh in terms of how i understand it it's it's kind of nebulous most people understand it as men dressing up as women in order to be humiliated for being women right that's a that's a very reductive and and a general understanding of what it is but mm-hmm. after all the research and my experience with the community and my experience having the title thrust on me and consuming their media and being immersed in it what i can tell you is that what sissy play is at its essence is it's a it's at the crossroads of feminization and humiliation role play mm-hmm. and to be a sissy is specifically to Merge those concepts into your kink, because Mm. if you're just into feminization without the humiliation, then you're just a feminization submissive. Mm -hmm. You're just someone who wants to be transformed and feel like a girl. Totally respect it. Not a problem. And if you're just into humiliation, then you're just into humiliation. And that doesn't imply any kind of gender expression. And even if you're both into feminization and humiliation, it isn't. The spe- but not the specific combination of being humiliated because you are a feminine man, mm-hmm. then you're still not a sissy. It has to be the specific intersection of those two fetishes, Okay, in my opinion, and in my experience in research. Mm-hmm. Um, so now the reason why this is important is because when I brought up the idea and my own history with it and the reason why I don't engage with sissies in my lifestyle practice, I do as a, as a professional, I can take those clients, but I don't do it for my own personal uh, journey is because that it, the implications of that specific intersection. Mm-hmm. Because let's let's break down why that kind of a fetish would exist in the first place. You know what I can't stand? Money stuff. First of all, it's adulting. Ugh. But secondly, our financial system and how it's stacked against us just ticks me off. And for a long time, I just opted out of that game. No credit cards, no loans, nothing. You know, wouldn't zero debt impress prospective landlords or car loan underwriters? Nope. 
Actually, it turns out to them, no credit history equals bad credit history. It makes no sense. Doesn't matter if you don't like playing the game. If you want to have a place to live or get financially ahead, you kind of have to. Well, thank goodness for Kickoff. If you have no credit or want to boost your score, Kickoff is the number one credit building app that's helped over a million people take control of their credit. There's no credit check, no hidden fees, and no interest. Plans start at just $5 a month, and for every on-time payment you make with Kickoff, it gets reported to the major credit bureaus. So when they see you playing the game with healthy spending habits, you see a credit score boost. Publications like Forbes and NerdWallet say Kickoff is a smart way to build credit fast. And they also have a 4.9 out of 5 rating in the App Store with over 44,000 rave reviews. So don't let your credit control you. Go to kickoff.com and start building better credit in less than 5 minutes. Don't put it off. That is K-I-K-O-F-F dot com to take control of your credit right now. Seriously, build your credit the easy way right now at kickoff.com. If you enjoy losing yourself in stories of passion, lust, and erotica, then you'll love erotic short stories. Tune in every Friday to hear me, Mia Hart, read you tales of lust, fantasy, and desire. My stories are pure escapism and a chance for you to indulge in some sensual erotica whenever you feel in the mood. Join me on Erotic Short Stories, available on all podcast platforms for your weekly fix. The Horny Housewife Podcast, the co-ed locker room where I, Jordan, your host, discuss the realities of sex and marriage, the evolution of sex and long-term relationships, dating your spouse, and inspiring creativity in the bedroom, spicing it up, mixing it up, whatever you want to call it. It's time to get intentional about the pleasure you desire to experience. Every week, expect to talk a little shit, learn some new things, and I'm answering your relatable and oh-so-interesting listener questions. Tune in every Monday for a new episode of the Horny Housewife Podcast. Let's let's break down why that kind of a fetish would exist in the first place, right? Okay, so you you take your average sissy. This is a, a guy who has the urge to appear feminine, but then be humiliated for it. What just off the bat, what does that say about that man's perception of the qualities of femininity? That there's something to be made fun of. Right. But yeah. Right? They're, they're because Less than exactly yeah. less than right. It inherently it, it for whatever reason it inherently devalues them as a person or as a man to express themselves as feminine mm-hmm. because obviously they're a man, right? There's mm-hmm. nothing that could cause that to come into question ever, right? So naturally, if they're a man and they appear feminine, then they are somehow wrong, and they need to be ashamed of that. It's not me saying this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they need they need to be ashamed of that and made to behave and be controlled and be humiliated because of that desire, right? And so that's the basis of sissy play, and it's one of the reasons why I personally find sissy play to be kind of a harmful fetish almost inherently. There are edge cases that I've managed to kind of eke out and and carve out in in the uh, in, in the fetish, but overall. The attitudes reflected in the people who go by those standards of I need to be humiliated because I am want to be feminine and I'm a man that just at its basis, I understand that this is in itself, you're not causing any harm to anyone, but your thoughts are in are indicative of a toxic internally held belief about the way people express themselves. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean that you think about actual men that choose to be feminine? Mm hmm. What does it say about feminine trans men? Yeah. Right? So, okay. So I'm like, I'm getting into like the theory and the debate. So Mm -hmm. 
And I know there's got to be folks who are listening thinking this, because like one of the things Mm. that we say in kink is it isn't necessarily the kink you are doing. It is the why and the intention behind it. And like, what are you? So like, if I'm playing theoretical, it's like, Mm -hmm. okay. And you said there are a few instances that you can parse out where it's like, okay, maybe okay, you're the exception. Just like off the top of my head, maybe there is, I don't know, a guy who was teased about his feminine nature, you know, or whatever, Mm -hmm. and is working out that trauma. And in his non kink, you know, default world head knows very well and believes that it is not less than to be feminine. They are doing this role play for other reasons, right? That, mm-hmm. And again, this is like a theoretical. Mm-hmm. Um, so when we're taking that theoretical and then we're applying it to like what we're actually seeing out there in the real world, sure. how does that like intention behind what you're doing, not exactly what you're doing, parse out with what's really happening? The intention makes all the difference in the world. Okay. Uh, and I was talking about this with this with the people who came to my munch and we were discussing this with them because um, it certainly has happened before where we'll pick up a sissy play client or a uh, even a lifestyle playmate. And through the course of a scene, by making them feminine, by erecting that barrier and strictly enforcing that barrier between their masculinity uh, that shields them off with it, would be locking them into that feminine role and getting them to explore that while keeping it under the guise of being forced and being enforced by someone external to themselves, it allows them the mental freedom to sort of explore this, these urges and these identities to Uh do the work of sorting it out psychologically to whatever end that is that they might come to. But this is why, as we mentioned before, it's the importance of vetting. If Uh someone is going to come to you and say, Hey, I want to do sissy play, or if they come to, let's use me as an example. If someone comes to me and they say, I want to do sissy play with you. My first question back to them is why? First of all, why do you use the term sissy? What do you know about sissy play? And what makes you specifically, what gives you the urge of uh, the urge to participate in this kind of play? And when people do, um, they're typically sorted into one of two camps, Mm -hmm. in my experience. Uh, The first camp would be, I want to do sissy play and I want to be humiliated for being feminine because I'm a man and men shouldn't do that. These are people with reductive ideas about gender, people who actually kind of are sexist, but they haven't admitted it to themselves yet. Because all these people say, oh, I'm a failed man because I'm I, I'm, I'm a man who expresses themselves feminine or people. I'm, I'm not supposed to do that. What does that say about me? I was born. I was born a man. Right. And right. I didn't say that way. Am I inherently less valuable to you? This is why it's particularly heinous for someone to come to me with that kind of an attitude and ask me to participate. I'm not going to masochistically yeah. take part in your, in your, in your fetish. Right. These are people with reductive ideas about gender and gender expression. And what the hierarchy between genders and gender expressions should be. And then the other camp is I was either made fun of for being feminine already, or I don't think that as a man or as a person who looks the way I do or acts the way I do, that I could convincingly or respectfully pull off femininity. Mm. So these are people usually men or closeted trans eggs mm-hmm. who wish they could perceive be perceived as a woman, but they can't. And they're ashamed of that. And okay. that is a, those are completely different sessions that we end up having. Those are vastly different mental places engaging in the same fetish, but for wildly different reasons. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I thank you for clarifying that because mm. I often say in kink, what we do is we're consensually perverting social norms and hierarchies for our pleasure. And Mm -hmm. it's like we are playing with the prescriptive roles and identities that have been forced on us, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we can do that in a healthy way or in an intentional way that helps us grow or see things or access a part of ourselves that we really need to access. And then we can do that in a way where we're just reinforcing the same old shit that's happening out there in the default world. And it's like a lot of folks say, 
I just want to fuck. Like, I don't want to think about like, well, where's my role in society? <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, But uh, my recommendation usually is it's like general rule of thumb, the more privilege you hold in society, the more work you have to do yeah. to figure out why the fuck are you doing this? Are you reinforcing bullshit or are you accessing something that you can't access and you're trying to grow or, you know, yeah. um, I don't know. What are your if thoughts on that? If you're going to come to a trans woman such as myself and ask me to participate in your kink, I'm going to ask you these questions. I look, you're, I'm very sorry to have interrupted your privilege, but you've come to me now and, and, or you're listening to this podcast and I'm sorry, but you're going to need to come to terms with this. These ideas have now been presented to you. It's your choice of whether or not you engage with them, but you can't, deny that these parallels exist. And if you consider yourself to be an ethical kinkster, if you consider yourself to be an ethical person, then you'll want to consider when a a concern is brought up about any action that you might take, any any uh pattern of behavior is observed as potentially harmful, then the onus kind of is on you as a person who exists in a society, right? We're social creatures. To look at and really honestly examine your actions and the ideas behind them and your motives behind them and decide whether or not this is something you need to keep indulging in, especially because it really is an indulgence. Yeah. You don't have to keep doing this. And if you're so compelled to continue doing it, you better have a damn good reason for doing that because you may not actively think that you're programming a certain idea into your own head, but you are reinforcing one. Mm -hmm. And that will seep in to the other aspects of your life. And that's before Eve, and that's just gender. That's not even bringing in the way it relates to sexuality and the ways that notoriously the sissy community happens to intersect a lot with racist, incredibly racist shit. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay, tell me about this. Okay. Like So, to everyone watching, listening, whatever, please, I mean this is the only time Anti EV is ever going to say this to you. Don't look this up because you will bleach your own eyeballs. But think about the leaps of logic that come along with having the sissy fetish and being immersed in it, right? I'm a failed man, right? I've got a little dick and I'm going to keep it in a chastity cage. I can't please a woman because I'm not a proper man, right? I'm a beta cuck. And it's cuckold play is a major part of the sissy community in general, right? I'm a beta Uh cuck. I need to let my wife get fucked by an alpha man and an alpha man, preferably with the big dick. Are you starting to see where it might be going? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm super so, sloping into BBC. So I get it goes it now. there. Yep, yeah. Not yep, only yep, that, yep. Okay. not only that, though, but not only for being cuckolded at home, but also the forced by scenarios that these people oftentimes imagine themselves being placed into usually involve that same scenario, that same set of circumstances and the people who would necessarily be participating in them. And if you don't heed my advice and you decide to go run down sissy captioned images and message boards, you will see some of the most racially offensive cartoons you've ever seen in your life. Stuff you shit you have not seen since they stopped making John uh, uh, Jim Crow style cartoons of black people. You'll see it. It's all there and it's still being made in current year. I swear to God, I wouldn't say it if I hadn't seen it for myself. It is wild wow. how far they'll go down this rabbit hole of regressive ideas about the qualities of other people under the guise of no it's me who's the loser no it's me who's the one who's got the little dick and isn't worth anything my self-worth comes from something else but not from my sexual prowess not from the size of my dick and not from my masculinity my self-worth has to come from something else and what does that say if they're in a relationship with someone 
where those aren't the aspects of their self-worth, which are contributing to the relationship. They can't get it at home. They get it somewhere else. Well, why can't get th- they get the other aspects of a, a positive relationship somewhere besides you too? What does yeah. imply about what you think about people from other demographics and what it is that they contribute to relationships and to society? It is fucked. I yeah. cannot say this enough. Don't look up these comics. Don't look up this art. You don't want to know. It's bad. It's really bad. And we haven't even gotten to the homophobia. Whoo! <laughs> God, it, you know, this, I read a study just came out and my brain, my like, Mm-hmm. Oh, paramenopausal brain just can't remember details i'll have to look it up and like put it in the show notes or you know talk a little bit about it in the intro mm-hmm. but basically it was a study that just dropped like it's a hit song by madonna um and uh that just shows i'm old a hit song <laughs> by madonna like it's 1986 again um but like it was something about like the, the more conservative your beliefs are and the more, you know, collection of isms that you believe in your real life, the further away your sexual interests are from your political belief. You know, it's stuff we already how know. How many it's people, like, how many like, congressmen, no shit, how many Republican right? congressmen exactly. get busted for smoke and pole, right? Like, exactly, it, exactly. It's, it's, it's a, because. It, it's kind of inherent to it, right? It's it's because it's taboo. That's what makes it enticing. We get to freely indulge in it because we admit that it's fine, right? But right. we didn't know how to engage with that community. But for them, it's forbidden fruit. For them, doing all mm-hmm. this stuff is fucked up, right? That's why this the 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 sissy fetish was just kind of this this entry level bit of men shouldn't be feminine, right? Oh, what else shouldn't mm-hmm. men be doing? Men shouldn't let other men fuck their wives. Men shouldn't be tolerating of interracial couples or marriage. Men should like all of these conservative ideas, they kind of build on each other until because anything that's outside the norm of what you personally or politically believe, that's what you're going to indulge in when you're trying to be kinky, when you're trying to be taboo. I, as a switch, and for the, for those of you who are surprised that I'm a switch, it's been in my TikTok handle since the beginning. (laughs) Switch <laughs> when I'm a switch and I get myself into submissive scenarios, it's not because I think I should be inherently submissive. It's because, fuck, I need a break from being dominant all the time, from needing to be a, an A-type and, you know, manage not only my vanilla job, but my side business doing this and being a dominatrix and managing stuff at home. It's, it's responsibility. Please, someone just quiet my mind and tell me what to do. I want to indulge in that which I don't really think of myself in the majority of my life that's me personally Mm -hmm. some people are just dominant in and out that's fine but for me it's it's getting away from that but for these people everything gay everything queer everything progressive to them is taboo so they they vacation in our existence in order to yeah i thought i'm doing is dirty and wrong except they actually believe it's dirty and wrong yeah i think like you know, as I hear you talk about all this and, you know, all the, I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I think some people listening along are like, oh, shit, shit. This may be an awakening for some. Fo-. It's like you can't you can't unring that bell Mm-mm. now. Like once you see it, you you can't unsee right. it. This stuff is all tied together. Right. So we're talking about folks who are gender nonconforming, who are trans, who, you know, we've touched on misogyny, you know, homophobia, all sorts of basically all the isms Mm -hmm. and the phobias, right? It is a damn ass slippery slope. Mm -hmm. And taking it back full circle to like, just looking at the community (laughs) as a whole, which that, you know, we say community, because what the fuck is that? Mm. I like Majori calls it the kink subculture, which is like, okay, I'll, 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 or the, what Sinclair Sexsmith, they say the, the kink communities, because there are many, many. I'm like, okay, I like, I like Mm -hmm. it. Um, But yeah, at looking at the kink community as a whole, Mm -hmm. it is really 
unwelcoming in some respects and not progressive, like especially when we're looking into those like really traditionalist Mm -hmm. hetero kind of spaces, right? And one thing that struck me, I was like, huh, is I published this list of 94 uh, genderless honorifics, like whoop-dee-doo, big deal. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe how many folks, gender nonconforming or not, are like, holy shit, I've been looking for something like this. I am so sick of the gender, 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 gender. You know, these are like cis, you know, folks who are not genderqueer or just like, I need this, I need this, I need this, because the goddamn community is so strict gender norms, traditionalists. Mm -hmm. So big question. What the hell do we do about that? Like, oh, generally, I know like we're doing our little parts and pockets to move things forward, Mm -hmm. to expand folks thinking, to not make these very normal things taboo, Mm -hmm. but really like what can we all collectively do or individually, uh, you know, in our community? Stop drinking kink like an alternate reality. Mm. You know, like we, we, we engage in role play. We create little scenarios that are outside of reality, but Stop treating kink like it's a space outside of reality. You bring everything that's outside, you bring it in with you. Your 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 mood, even, your 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 gender orientation, your 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 the way that you your sexual orientation, your gender expression, your gender identity, your sense of spiritual identity, even. I, I certainly do. We'll talk about it in another episode, baby. Um, but there's you bring everything with you. You may not talk about it, but it's still there. And to deny that is to deny parts of your own personhood, to deny aspects yeah. of your humanity. You you don't want people attracted to a fake version of you. You don't want people to meet you and 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 be attracted to you and 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 be inspired by a lie. You want people to see you as who you are when you are vulnerable open exposed as the person you really are and accepted for that i promise you no matter what you think would get you more laid or more play or whatever at the dungeon being yourself and holding out for a community that's going to accept you as who you are is always going to be more fulfilling in the end So do that, and you have to allow others to do the same, which means not erecting uh, obstacles in their way towards participating in the community as their authentic selves. So we need to eliminate gendered pricing. And we need to, instead of of being using these reductive terms like sissy for people, for men who want to express themselves in a feminine way, sit there and really break down what it is they want and why they want it and give These people, when you engage with them as a dominant, give them an experience more in line with where it is they need to end up or where they want to end up instead of just blindly catering to the desires of the people who want to play with you for whatever reason. You are allowed to bring your critical thinking into this space. Yes, you are allowed to bring your politics into the space. It's not fun to be political, but everything is. I'm sorry. It's the real world. And everyone who should be in this space is an adult. So you're going to have, you're going to run up against some adult problems. If you can't handle that, then this lifestyle isn't for you. It's not a quick and easy way to get laid. It's not your ticket to a completely different life. It's a way for you to explore yourself and to express yourself in a different way. But we need to make sure that we create that by bringing people along with us. And as the culture shifts, yeah, there's going to be growing pains. Yes, at first, you're probably going to have to learn a few different ways to address people by different pronouns. Yeah, you're probably going to have to learn some different honorifics. There's a dominant playmate that I've been talking with for a bit. And she wanted for the longest time to be called Sir because she's a huge Star Trek fan. Oh. Cool. Now she's changed it. She's not really vibing with it anymore. She came up with now she wants to be called Domina, which cool. Awesome. But and yeah, it takes an adjustment period. You might have to learn different ways to address people in different ways. But isn't that worth it to get along with more people? 
Because if your ultimate objective is to become a part of your community, to have fun, to be given the opportunity to do the things that you want to do, you're going to have a much better chance of doing that by treating everyone around you with respect, which will attract people to you. Yes. Woo! You just took me to kink church. <laughs> you took us all to kink church. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. Like that, that is really what mm-hmm. it's all about. And, you know, it's like in one respect, I can feel just like, oh, you know, especially when I, I see a lot of, you know, m- that more traditionalist sort of uh, subset or mm-hmm. sub communities or whatever um, that are just kind of entrenched in the same old, same old, and like, don't get what you're saying. But more and more, you know, as an educator, as a coach, I am seeing people who seem on the surface to fit that mold, Mm -hmm. where I'm just like, I don't have much hope for you. Uh, (laughs) And then no, but then it's like, they're opening up, they're being vulnerable, they're tapping into that scary place Mm -hmm. of of self discovery. And I'm like, you know, you listening out there, you know, it's you. Good mm-hmm. job. Like we need and I'm seeing it like little bits and pieces. We need more Here's of this because trans people we want it, to all the cis allies out there. We do actually want you with us here in the kink community and we do want to interact with you. But in a lot of cases, we have been jaded or just scared off by the way that we've been treated by other people. And yeah, it might be a bit before we trust you. It might be a while before we're like, okay, we get it. You really are about that. And you really are going to be here and back us up. But being vocally present and willing to take criticism and say, okay, yes, you're right. I didn't use the right word or I should change how my pronouns are. And being adaptable and flexible, it's going to present you with better opportunities. Even if it's not with a trans person. You get around as someone if you you if you start going to parties and to other events and you're known as a person who will stand up for trans people, if you're correcting people for the pronoun use, if you're the one learning about all these things and 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 being receptive towards feedback you get from the community, that reputation is gonna spread. And people are gonna learn that you're a safe person. And trust me when I say, okay, 15 years in the lifestyle, there is nothing. That is a more valuable currency in this lifestyle than your reputation. Yes. People want to know that you're consistent. They want to know that you're ethical and they want to know you're consistent. They don't give a shit about how big your dick is. They don't give a shit about how well you throw that flogger. I like a little bit of how well you throw that flogger, but (laughs) nothing matters more than your reputation. They want to know that you can be trusted that you are a safe person and that if they tell you, Hey, I need you to change the way that you talk to me or that the, you know, that you will accept feedback about your behavior, about the way that you go about things that is going to get you so much farther with everyone than just sticking to your own demographics where you think it's safe. and You never have to challenge and, and step out of your comfort zone. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Yep. Yep. And and y'all listening, uh, American fuckers, take that information in the context of the kink community and now break it out to everywhere Mm -hmm. in every community because it's the same damn thing. We're just, you know, don't have floggers and latex and some of the other communities. But yeah, (laughs) they should though. Same. (laughs) Exactly. I know. It's like I'm going to be at Walmart like with my flogger and my latex. Uh, This has been a conversation that has fed my soul that is like, oh, yes, 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 yes. So as we're wrapping up, you know, is there anything that you wanted to leave us with that you didn't? And also then tell us like what you got going on and where to find you. All that stuff. Um, So uh, yeah, last parting thought is again, Look up the venues in your local area if they're available, obviously. I mean, I know FetLife is a hell site, but go there anyway and see if you can find venues that are specifically geared towards trans inclusion. Out here, we have um, Expanse, uh, which is a gender expensive party centering tr- trans and gender nonconforming people. Now, cis people are allowed inside, but it's not about them. Mm-hmm. But they're welcome. And consider going to parties where you're not in the majority if they're inclusive if you're allowed to go there right like out here for for example for the um 
AAPI community out here, right? We have sake, SoCal Asian kink events, right? It's open to everybody. It's just a Asian centered space. Go to those events, see what it's like. Go there to a place where you're not in the majority and notice the ways that your psychology changes in those environments, especially if you're in, you know, the global minority, if you're, if you're, especially if you're white, especially if you're cisgender, especially if you're a man, right? Not to talk down to those people to say, Hey, these are the experiences that are going to do you some good because you're going to think, I got to watch what I say around here. Yeah. Well, you have to watch what you say everywhere. You're just more aware of it here. You got to be more conscious of the things that you do. And you're going to become aware of the kind of pressures that are around people when you're not in the majority. When if you are, if you go to a trans party and you're shitty to a trans person, you're not going to get backed up. It's not going to get swept under the rug. And yeah, that might seem like a, 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 a daunting thing or sort of threatening, right? But it's not. They're just p- going to police your respect of the community. And see if you're open to feedback. But that's the kind of risk that the rest of us face on a daily basis existing in society. To experience what that's like is going to be invaluable towards your progress as a person and your interpersonal relationships. I promise you, you will grow as long as you're receptive. Yes. Yes clapping <laughs> i would stand up if i didn't have wires like tethered I've, i'm in like uh, like audio oh bondage same, right same. Now. I got <laughs> wires everywhere wire shibari so where can folks get more veronica okay so the main place you're going to get more of me is on tiktok right i'm at switch vero v-e-r-o on on tiktok that's where i put out the majority of my content i'm very talky all right. I don't do a ton of thirst traps. It's very talky. It centers around uh, ethics and kink is my is my main wheelhouse. And I hope that you'll be along, along for that journey. Uh, you'll find me on Twitter at Veronica Kestrel. You'll find me at Veronica Kestrel on most platforms. Uh, Only fans is V Kestrel. And uh, yeah, so that'd be Instagram at Veronica Kestrel, a Twitter at Veronica Kestrel and a few other sites i can't name them all um and and i'll have those all in the show notes so just go to the episode description click on the link if you're in southern california then we actually do have a monthly doll play meet and if you saw my last episode with sunny megatron we talked about doll play if you're interested in doll play at all um we meet in anaheim once a month we'd love to have you join us uh, our next one's going to be the beginning of april uh so if you're in the area please by all means uh come see us and if you're going to domcon this year i will be there at domcon la i haven't heard back about whether or not i'm going to be teaching a class but i will also be teaching a class on doll play if that is accepted and goes through into the final program so i hope to see you there Yay. Oh, I always love talking to you. As you know, you will be back when I don't know. So listeners, you're just going to have to listen every single week without fail. Do it. You know. Exactly. Do exactly. It. Uh, thank you. Mwah, 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 mwah. Until next time. Next bye. time. Bye. Thanks for listening to American Sex. What's that? You want more? Well, you can start by streaming our TV show on Showtime, Sex with Sunny Megatron. Then pop on over to SunnyMegatron.com. Everything's there. You can get updates on my new book, check out my sex ed and BDSM workshops, learn how to book me for your organization or for coaching. You know, we also want to hang out with you too, right? So come join our Discord community. Or follow along on TikTok or Instagram, Twitter, all the social media. I'm Sunny Megatron everywhere. And you can catch Ken on Twitter or tune in to his weekly D&D games on Twitch. If you want to support the show, a great way to do that is simply to tell people about it. Make a TikTok or tweet about your favorite part of this episode. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe and leave a review too. And if you're a ride or die American fucker, you're going to want to join our Patreon community. We'll send you official American Fucker stickers, and you'll get a lot more, too, at patreon.com slash American Sex. Now, just in case you happen to be one of the few that still has disposable income in this late-stage capitalist hellscape, well, when you're shopping for a new sex toy, BDSM gear, Kink Academy membership, or other things, please 
patronize our sponsors and affiliates. You'll get a discount and it helps us too. Win-win. All those links and codes are in our show notes. Thanks, American fuckers. We appreciate the heck out of you. See you next time.